the other the other link to Arsenal I wanted to get your opinions on before we get onto the games is Zuba Mendy at Staffy. Heavily linked today with a move for Arsenal. He has been for the majority of this season, but Arsenal, they don't need to rebuild. They need to add some quality. I think we really saw that in the Champions League this year. Adding the likes of Isak, Zubamendi, that extra star quality into the squad, I think is, is I think it's the next, I'm going to, I'm going to use this word to trigger people, but caveat it. It's the next phase in, in their development. Oh my days. But, but that's with or without Arteta, it's irrelevant. This is the irony. I'm not talking phases under a manager. I'm talking the phase the club is in. They've got to add better quality players. With, with or without Arteta, it's irrelevant. And I look at Zubamendi, and what I've seen a bit of him this year. I've read a lot about him. You add him to that midfield with Declan Rice. For me, that elevates Arsenal instantly. I, I don't know your take on that, Staffy. The thing about Zubamendi, I, I, I don't know what direction Arteta's trying to move into. Because I feel like... Arteta's low-key doing what, what Pep was doing a few years ago. The thing about Pep, Pep is, is always innovating his, his system year after year. So every time we think we figured out Pep, he just throws another element or two the season after. Getting a Zuba Mendy, he's a good player. He's going to retain the ball well. You're a position-based team. But I, I, I think they lack a little bit of physicality in that team. When you have someone like Havertz in that team, when you have someone like Zinchenko, and now you're going to add a Zuba Mendy. I feel like all I'm looking at is like you're just trying to keep the ball. But even Pep has moved away from that. Pep has now added some players that not only just keep the ball, but they're physical. This is why he plays with four center backs. Back then, he used to play with, with, with full backs. He actually used to put midfielders in the back line. Now he's in, he's playing system, which has more defenders because he wants to defend more when he doesn't have the ball because he already knows he's good at keeping the ball. When I look at Arteta, first of all, he wanted um, Amado Unana, who is not necessarily a Zuba Mendy, but he's very physical and he's very good at winning the he's ball. He's the opposite of but Zuba Mendy. Actually. He's actually the, the opposite. This is why I'm saying I'm confused what you're trying to do. Like, what are you trying to add to this team? This is not me saying that Zuba Mendy isn't a good player. Would Zuba Mendy in the midfield with Rice be decent? Yes. But I, I just see that a team now is going to lack physicality. That's a shit season. signing for Stafford. We have to say it as it is. No, no, no. It's and not a shit signing. Stop kissing Wait, Arsenal and Arsenal say it as it is. This is such a shit signing for Why is it Arsenal. a shit signing, though? I'll tell you why, why it's a shit signing. Because Arsenal now, I said it last summer, and the Arsenal fans got pissed off and triggered. And I'm going to say it again. Arsenal now need their Alisson and Van Dijk. We're talking about star power and what they're going to do in the Champions League. The fuck is Zuba Mendy going to do? Pass left, pass right 100 times. Who gives a fuck? They need... Players who are either world-class or on the fringe of becoming world-class. The last thing they need is another youngster who's going to take another three, four months to get adapted. He's not young. Three, He's not young. He's 25, 25 years old. He's not a youngster. That's not, That's not what Arsenal need. Arsenal need a player that is this close to becoming world-class. That's what Arsenal need right now. They need a player. You know, you know what would make us, you know what would take Arsenal to the next level as an example? Mbappe goes to Real Madrid. Hello, Madrid. Here's 100 million for Rodrigo. Give me. This is what makes them aware. This is yeah, really. But that's a different position. No, no, no. Yeah. no hear me out. It's oh not God. just that example. Don't make it about Rodrigo now. I'm just using as an example. No, no. I'm saying, I'm saying these are the type of players that Arsenal need to sign. You want to talk midfield? No problem. Go get Frankie de Jong. Yalla, here. I'm giving you an, a realistic example. Go get Gavi, yachi. Go get Pedri. How no, no, that? no. But but all these players don't solve what I said. What I was trying Arsenal to I was trying to be rational it. about it. I read, listen, Zuba Mendy will get a move anyways. Let's just be honest. Zuba Mendy, you're talking about players that are being verge world class. He is one of those players. Like he can fit in so many teams and he wouldn't look at a place. But I'm looking at it as what they need. Do they need to replace Jorginho and Partey because of his injuries and all that? Yes, I get that. But when you get Zuba Mendy, I'm still seeing frailties in this team. When you look at how they played against Bayern, that Bayern team was too physical for them. They had men on that team. You need men to win this Premier League. This is why City go at it every year, because they keep adding men into this team. They went away from just being pretty football and tiki-taka football to, yeah, we'll do that. But when we have to defend and we have to be physical, we got dogs in this team. Okay, so, we got so Kanji's a dog. We got Rodri. Superman. So, so who are these? No, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying okay. uh, this is what I questioned it, Hossam. Yeah. I said he's a good it's player. A but, uh, no, no, yeah, it's not. Uh, let, 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 let me just let me just finish my point, Terry. If they add a Zuba Mendy, but they go get a real left back, which is not what Arteta does, and this is why I want to know what the hell yeah. are you doing? Yeah. If he goes and gets a real left back instead of that bullshit of inventing, uh, uh, inverting 
Zinchenko into the midfield and he's shit defensively, then I'll be like, you know what? Go ahead and get in Zubamendi because you're fixing another issue while adding that. You're 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 changing what you did already. That's what Pep does. Pep used to have Cancelo. He said, now F that. Let me put a center back there. Let me do what, 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 what a real defender does. And I'll get my midfield work for my real midfielders and stones. That's the same thing. The same thing with Havertz. Stop putting Havertz as a false nine. And then you're trying to get me a Zubamendi because you're already lacking something up front. You need a physical striker that's going to be there in the box to win you balls. And when the team is not scoring goals and the pretty football is not working, this guy is going to be physical. He's going to leap in there. He's going to score you a header. He's going to shrug off a defender and he's going to score you a goal. You need to fix other elements if you so, want to add a Zubamendi. And this is why I said I need to know what he wants to do. That's all so, it is. So I understand. Look, I think shit signings over the top. I, 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 again, there's a few things I'll say on this. I agree completely. It's not the only area they have to address. I think the left back situation, let's see what Uri and Timber looks like when he returns from his injury. Looked good in preseason. Looked, he literally played what a game, game and a half before his knee went. So we never had a chance to see. I think that needs to be assessed. I, I think left back, full back, 100% I agree with you. I think, and this is an area that, that I got wrong when talking about Arsenal this year. I thought that Martinelli and Saka by this point would be banging in more goals. Therefore, I didn't think they needed necessarily a prolific number nine i thought they would get i'm not comparing the quality and the consistency but i thought you'd get a bit more mane and salah out of them where they're S saka's output has been pretty good but i thought martinelli's would be somewhere near nearer to that as well mm -hmm. this season so i think they need to go and get someone like an isak as well but when i look at zubamendi people say small he's five foot eleven and i think he weighs like 75 76 kilos which is only a couple of kilos lighter than the likes of declan rice and rodri he's not a short skinny weightless man he's excellent on the ball as, as an example i don't see it as a bad signing midfield is one of the most key areas of a team if all, they sign, if, well, say, if they, all they sign is with a and they don't address the left back position they don't sign another striker they don't sign someone on the right to, to not i don't think to back up saka i think they need to sign someone on the right to challenge Bakayo saka's position if they don't do those things then i would say it's a crap window but I don't personally think the signing of Zubamendi is rubbish in itself. He is excellent on the ball, good height, good size, great age at 25 years of age. And I think that he would he would make their team even stronger defensively and even stronger when it comes to going forward because of the way he would be able to knit the defense and attack together. Okay. Arsenal don't have a problem keeping the ball. Arsenal have a problem with game winners and match winners. That's Arsenal's problem. You're talking about the transfer window in general. I am I'm looking at Zubamendi alone. Zubamendi alone does not make Arsenal any better. Because it that, like, okay, Zubamendi with that him, him, but that doesn't make him a rubbish signing. That means if they only sign him, yes. But if they sign him, no, no, no. I'm just talking about him. I'm talking about him. You're talking about the transfer window in general. Put the yes, transfer window. Why is to the he side. a bad signing though? Okay, I'll tell you why he's a bad signing. Because he doesn't improve Arsenal. He does not improve Arsenal. There's nothing that Zubimendi does that... Okay, next season you come up against the Arsenal midfield. Zubimendi, uh, Zubimendi, Rice and Odegaard. There's no difference between that, Jorginho and Odegaard. It's the same shit. Than my Jorginho point, than my than point than is as follows. My point is as follows. Now, Arsenal's focus needs to be on, on midfielders or forwards or whichever position they want to sign. Forget the transfer window in general. Whichever position you want to sign that are game changers that are ready to make that world-class step, which okay. Zubamendi isn't. So, I understand your point of view, but you're ignoring something. Partey is definitely leaving this summer, and Jorginho is getting much older. He is physically bigger and stronger than Jorginho and has the ability to, 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 to look after the ball in midfield like Jorginho. So yes, they're not adding in a match winner who is renowned for winning games with the final ball or the, the, the goal in itself, but Arsenal can't. This is what you. But what you're suggesting makes sense in terms of bringing two more attackers that are match winners for you. Okay, cool. Do that. But if they then ignore the hole that's going to be created by Jorginho being a year older and Partey leaving, they're then going to have another problem. That their midfield is too weak, and then heaven forbid, Declan Rice gets an injury. Then we'll all be saying, "How comes you didn't address the midfield?" I think this summer, someone like Zubamendi is key. But they, you're right; they can't just sign him. But it doesn't make Zubamendi as a signing bad. Zubamendi would be an excellent signing. By the way, for any, of, for, for, any, for any of our teams, if Man United were linked to him, I'd be absolutely over the moon. Zubamendi, I mean, 
Zubamendi next to Mainu. You're oh. a different today, Stary, with all due respect. You are. Improving the midfield. Great for improving Man United. midfield. I think every club in the world, every single club in the world, should always be looking to improve its midfield. It's generally speaking the most key and important part of a team for consistency. I generally Daddy, think they should be going get, getting someone like Arsenal Partey. are going to win the league. Do you agree that next season, if people fo- genuinely are Arteta out next season, if he doesn't win anything, they have a point because it's been too much now. There needs to be a fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now. Does Zubamendi get Arsenal closer to a Premier League title or a Champions League? No, he does yes. not. Yes. I don't think he does, personally. Unless he we're improved. talking about depth. Again, but, but, you're, but you're, you're being a reductionist. You're being a reductionist. And you're, again, yes, you're right if Arsenal only signs Zubamendi. But are we, are we li- we're living in cloud cuckoo land if we think they're only signing Zubamendi? So it, it, no, for me, it's saying, a, okay, I, I'm not saying a moot point. It's a moot point. Squad depth. If they're signing him as depth, no. which is what you're suggesting, no, you're they're not. They're signing and you, you are not you're signing him. Oh, and just... their replacement. Okay, that's they, what you're saying. Hang on, they are not signing Zubamendi if they get him for squad depth. He is coming in to be a first team player. Okay, Parte is more of a match winner and a better player than Zubamendi currently is. No, he's not. Does Zubamendi bring no, Arsenal closer to a Premier League title? He is, he, yes, he, Parte, if he's a depth Parte, piece. Sorry, Partey isn't currently better because the man can't stay fit. He is not currently I, I, better I than Zubamendi. He doesn't play I, games. I, I accept that. Your, accept your, point, that. your point, I understand where it is in isolation. If we were sitting here one day before the transfer window shuts and all that's been signed is Zubamendi, I get your point. But we're sitting here deluding ourselves into thinking that Arsenal are only going to sign one player. We know that's no, no, not I'm happening. I'm not saying that, Terry. I'm just saying they need to sign players that are on the fringe that's of fine. the fine. That's but, currently. But, that, that's fine. But, a... we're talking, but we're talking about Zubamendi in isolation and what he can bring to them. Saying he's yeah, a signing is crazy to me. As a depth player, then your point would be 100% correct, which is, okay, now you've sold Partey and Jorginho. I get my world-class player in, Terry, and then I get Zubamendi alongside him then your point is 100% correct. All I'm saying is, if they're signing player from the ilk of Zubamendi, let's say Arsenal, let's just put Zubamendi to the side. Let's just talk about quality and prototype or whatever. Let's say Arsenal signed four players this summer, okay? Let's just throw a number out there. Three, four players this summer. All three, four players are the Zubamendi prototype, you know, which is not necessarily on the fringe of becoming world-class or a world-class player currently. Arsenal will not get to the level required uh, can I ask you a question I, okay. let me ask you a question when it comes to these world class elite players Arsenal should be buying who are they G- give me some examples of the players that you genuinely think Arsenal have the money and the ability to pull away from the current club they're at who are these players they should be signing in your opinion okay players that are on the fringes of becoming world class or currently world class would be the likes of a Gavi who have has shown that in the, the ability to, to leave Barcelona before. Like that, as an example, by the way, one of them is leaving West Ham this summer. I know he's already signed for Man City, but that's just an example. And Paqueta, when you're talking, when you're looking at Joshua Kimmich, who has been open to a move away from, from Bayern Munich, and he's going to be listening to offers. Leon Goretzka is another one. We can keep going on and on and on and on. Rafael Leao, if you want to talk about forward line players, you can go all over the, the, the pitch. And I'm saying, Terry, I'm not, I understand. The reason why you ask this question is because currently in world football, there isn't that many world-class players, which is fair. That's why I said at least on the fringe of becoming world-class. So like he's ready to make that next step with Arsenal football. So my my issue isn't about your interpretation of world-class or mine because that's subjective. My view is Rafael Liao I get because I think Rafael Liao, if they've got the money, is attainable because AC Milan Mm -hmm. are a huge club. Historically, they're not at the moment. The problem is when you say Gabby, I just don't think he has any appetite to leave Barcelona. So therefore, Arsenal wasting any time on him. It's, it's like their fans that want the manager sacked and keep saying, bring me Zidane. I mean, Zidane has just rejected Bayern Munich. He's also going to reject Arsenal. So it makes zero... He's not even a six, so there's no point of mentioning him. You're talking about <laughs> yeah. sixes. Why, why are we yeah, talking about the Premier I think, I think this is the thing for me. And, and again, I, I think, think Rafael Leao was, I think, I think Leao was a good shout. But like when you said Rodrigo, in the summer, I remember me and Lee had a debate. And he said, we should get rid of Rashford. And I said, who would you buy to replace? Who genuinely thinks better on the left? And he said, well, you're big man United. Go and get Vinicius Jr. And I didn't mean to laugh at him to be rude, but it was just, that's never happening. And that's the problem a lot of people have. They say, bring someone in who's better, but they put no thought into what that person is. And I, I think Arsenal Vinicius will, Arsenal will look I think this is going to be maybe the biggest summer spending 
month, uh, uh, summer of Arsenal's in Arsenal's history. It will be on three or four players. It won't be a mass amount of players in. It will be on three or four players. But I think they will be going. Look, I think they look at Isak as being that player that's 24, big ceiling, but already scoring lots of goals. I think that's the kind of profile they've got to go for. I think that it's very difficult to go and... Because they need three or four new players. It's very difficult to go for that guy that's already looked at as one of the best in the world who's going to cost you 160 million because you're using so much of your budget. I think you have to be a little bit pragmatic with it. But it'll be interesting to see and viewers. Let us know what your thoughts and feelings...